G'day folks, it's One Saurus here again for our 17th episode of The Land of Saurus. And uh, today is quite a good day. We've gotten quite a few new subscribers since our last video. Um, as you can see from uh, all of the space that we've had to clear out for them. Uh, so we have uh, well, six, new, six new subscribers to welcome uh, here at Subscriber Forest. So we've got one here, here. Yeah, and we've only got just enough, uh, just enough signs for them all as well. So I'll chuck all of their signs down now. Also, Let's just quickly run back up here. So the first person that we are welcoming to Subscriber Forest is Mr. Krabs twenty six. And actually, I just prefer to go for the <laughs> caps lock at the beginning. So, Mr. Krabs, 26. We also have, let's go over here, uh, Dragon, oh, Dragon Slayer 450. And then over here, we have... Ultimate, Ultimate Ninja, and then I'm going to have to go down here for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> and then next on the list is uh, let's have a look. Ben Mitchell, four twenty. I'm pretty sure that's how I spell it. Yep. Then over here we finally have Rasmus Danube. And our last subscriber here uh is an unknown subscriber. I have no idea who they were. So uh they don't have their account set to um show their subscriptions on their YouTube. So, uh, not sure who that person is, but I'd like to welcome all of these people to Subscriber Forest. Thank you so much for showing your support to the channel. And we already have one, oh no, no, none of the trees have grown up yet. So let's just grow up everybody's trees. Let's see if anyone gets a nice big tree. So we've got a, a tree there. That's fairly sizable. Yeah, and finally, there we go. So we have a wide variety of new subscribers here. So thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so the first thing I want to do in this episode is uh, show you this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn this whole area down here in my mine shaft into just this whole, all of these walls and stuff into a more permanent uh, long-term storage area. So um, I just need to organize a whole bunch of that, but I also need more chests. Uh, so in order to get more chests, I'm going to have to uh, get myself a very large quantity of wood. So I'm gonna have to plant a bunch of trees, collect a bunch of wood and uh, build a bunch of chests. Okay, so I've expanded out this area a little bit to try and fit in some more trees and uh, I've, I've been doing a bit of cutting down of some wood. So hopefully now we've got enough wood to uh, get enough chests for our storage area. Okay, after uh, spending quite a reasonable amount of time cutting down a lot of wood, we now have uh, some item frames for all of these. Um, we have an idea of what blocks we'll be storing down here in our permanent long-term storage system. Um, that diamond is just a representation of diamond ore. And then uh, we also have a bunch more chests so we can fill out these walls here. But I don't think we still have enough chests. But, I mean, this will be a very long-term storage solution. So hopefully this will last us uh, quite a reasonable amount of time. Okay, so we have all 
all of the chests now put in. We've allocated some of these uh, chests to certain things. This will be diamond ore blocks, not actual... I didn't have any diamond ore on me, so I'll replace this when I get some more diamond ore. Um, we've got a lot of room for stone, and then we've got our granite. Um, I've started organizing a bit of it already. Diorite, andesite, cobblestone, dirt, grass, gravel. And then I've got a few other blocks here that uh, I'm going to try and sort out as well, um, just as long-term storage. So we've got plenty of things to work with at the moment, and if we need to expand out, um, it's it's going to be good. Um, so yeah, this, this should last us a while in terms of longer-term storage. So uh, yeah, this, this will work out all right. Okay, folks, so it looks like we have organized everything now. So we've got all of our long-term storage set up down here. We've got room to grow. Uh, we've got a couple extra spaces here. We've got a whole bunch that we can start putting down along here if we start finding more things to we want to add to this system. So we've got a very nice long-term storage system here ready and set up. So I think the next thing that I'll do is I will break in this storage system by doing uh, a little bit of a mining session. So uh, I'm going to go get myself some torches and head back down here and do uh, a good long mining session. I'm getting a bit tired of this outdoor area. It's not looking so nice. This mob grinder just is useless. So I'm thinking that I might take that down and also make a bit more of a sugarcane farm and uh, a more dedicated area for the, the cows and stuff like that so I think I'm just going to upgrade the whole front yard essentially because uh, this is all this is all just a bit meh so I think we can upgrade the whole front of our uh, our, our place for a little bit anyway I'll uh, start by taking down this monstrosity I think yeah it feels good to start taking this thing down and I've got some iron golems that have been uh, spawning on the top of my castle as well from the, the villagers up there on that floor. Maybe if I push them down on the ground, we can use them to protect ourselves from, uh, from raids and stuff like that too. But yeah, it might take me a little while to get this, uh, this mob grinder down to the ground. Okay, you know what? I'm actually quite uh, tired of this mob grinder and I can't really be bothered taking it down properly. So I've just decided that... Um, I'm going to blow this thing up and chuck some TNT there. Is there anything in here that I really want to keep? Maybe I'll just take some of these drops. Don't need those. Bit of iron. Yeah, everything else can go. Um. Whoa, why did that... Okay, I have no idea why that went off. Oh, it must be powered by redstone. Okay, that, that complicates things a bit. Hey, go away. Alright. I'm going to have to do this from the top then. Whoop, that one's going. All right, <laughs> those corner ones are no good either. Oh, that one's no good for some reason as well. Okay. Uh, okay, all right, okay. This is not going according to plan at all. This is probably gonna end up being more of a mess than anything else. Okay, so we've got 53 TNT left. Let's see how much damage we can actually do to this structure with that. Jesus. Okay, okay, everything's going off. Oh my god. Okay, everything seems to be okay. What if I shoot this TNT over here? Nothing? This is just not working at all. I think I needed a bit more TNT.
Okay, what if I go like that, and like that, and like that, and then run? Uh. Whoa. Okay. This is just not exploding well at all. Well, I think all I've really managed to do is uh, make deconstructing this thing a hell of a lot harder for myself. So, I am going to say that that was a uh, bit of a, uh, a bit of a fail. Yeah. That, that didn't really work out much at all. Oh, there's, there's still some more blocks in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Might as well just go around shooting what's left. Is there any more TNT around? Oh, there's heaps of TNT around. They just weren't close enough. It's kind of working, but yeah, I think I've I've just made deconstructing this thing a lot more difficult for myself <laughs> more than anything else. Ah, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to go about this the, the, the hard way. Okay, so I've decided that this thing is becoming quite difficult to take down, so what I'm going to try and do here is make myself a beacon. So we'll set something up, um, preferably somewhere around here. And then what? Uh, if we're if, just as long as it has sky access, really. And then I don't know how many layers, but we'll find out. So chuck this all around. Hey, this is going to be a bit difficult to build. And then finally, some emerald ones. I don't think I'd be able to make another layer with what I got. Um, so if I go up to this thing, and I click on haste, and I give it an emerald. So now we've got haste, so are we just going to melt through everything? How do we get haste to? Do I need a... Because this is an efficiency 5 pickaxe. Doesn't really seem all that much faster than what I had. How do we get haste to? Okay, so I think I might have enough blocks now to fully complete this this structure. Maybe still not enough. We'll see. Jeez, it needs a lot of blocks for a full beacon. Really? We're one block short? Is that what's that's what's happening? one block. Don't be a jerk. Okay, I've returned with the last block for this beacon. So I think this thing, one, two, three, four, four layers, this should now offer me haste too? Yes, it does. But I think I have to still give it another peace offering. But is this now what we have? Do we have haste too? We do. We are insta-mining everything. Okay, this is going to make it a lot easier to bring this thing down then. Ooh, this is going to take a long time. Okay, so I think we're just getting the final few blocks out here uh, of this disaster of a mob grinder that has given me nothing but grief since its conception. Um... So all we need to do now is just sort of take down this beacon and uh, clean up this mess. But yeah, that, that feels very odd to not have that sitting there <laughs> anymore. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that it's gone. 
and here we have it. This is the what is left of our mob grinder. It has been completely taken down. Um, yeah, geez, I, I really shouldn't have uh, wasted all that TNT. It only made my life a lot harder. Oh, well, now to patch all this up. And there we have it. It has all been taken down, the hole filled in. It is all done. So now uh, I think I'm going to take down, I'm going to take out my cow pit, take down my sugarcane farm and my regular farm here, and we're going to make uh, some stuff that's a bit more efficient and utilize this space a bit better. And here it is, folks, my newly empty front yard. So, yeah, I'm going to start working on some projects in here, I think. Maybe start automating uh, a few items, maybe. You know, I'll use this space, essentially, for, for automatic farms, really. And just to sort of, like, make things a little bit easier. And I might, underneath here, put a uh, storage area to collect everything with a bit of a, a storage system that um, consolidates everything in one place, you know. Melons, pumpkins, all the things that you want to trade with villagers, sugar cane, um, leather, chicken, feather, you know, all that kind of stuff. We'll just see whatever we can uh, find. Uh, so, yeah, I will uh, start working on some of these projects and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, so I've been playing around in my uh, redstone testing world here, and uh, I think I've made a design that could work for my sugarcane farm. Uh, it's essentially, um, like I'll show it quickly, so you grow this up, it activates the pistons, it pushes all of the, the sugarcane into the water stream, and then we've got the hopper minecarts here that are, are picking up the, uh, the excess that land on top of the sand. Um, and all of these are connected, which means that they all come through to a central storage unit that we can expand out at our leisure, and hopefully this is a design that will uh, make us a really decent amount of sugarcane fully automatically. Um, so I'm going to hop back onto my normal world and uh, start building this thing. Um, I've got two modules set up here, but I'll actually go for, for three full modules. And uh, we will see if, uh, if it works out well there. Okay, so before we can really make our, uh, our nice new sugarcane farm, we really need a, a really reliable method of getting wood. So I'm going to build like... It's not going to be a tree farm or anything, but it's going to have like platforms above the trees so they don't grow too high to make them easier to cut down. So yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to start building, um, like placing down some areas where we're going to have like a permanent tree plantation more or less. Okay, so here we are at the tree farm that I've just built now. We have a room for 50 trees exactly. Um, and these slabs up here are just to stop the tree growing above a certain height. That way uh, every log that does grow will always be able to uh, reach it and we won't have to go climbing above any anything um, in order to get it. So I'm just going to plant all of these up and then we should have a fairly good tree farm coming, working for us at this point. And here we have it. We've planted all of our trees and we've put a bunch of torches around. One, I think it helps them grow a little bit quicker, especially at night, um, if they've got high light levels. And uh, also it'll, it'll be a good way to keep the mobs out of the area. So uh, yeah, all we have to do now, we've already had one tree grow, so all we have to do now is just wait for the rest of them to grow and then we'll have a, a very good and healthy supply of wood coming in, hopefully. So I'm just taking out all of these torches on this tree farm because uh, I think what's happening is uh, these torches are actually stunting the the, the tree's growth. Um, and I think it's because uh, every tree that I'm getting, they all have this missing corner. So I think they can't, they can't grow the types of trees that have these sorts of, uh, like the corner leaf blocks in. So it's making it so it's very limited in what trees that it can actually grow. So I'm going to have to try and figure out another place to put these uh, light sources, I think. Okay, so I've sort of given up on uh, trying to make this 
whole thing work and so instead of um, doing oak trees I'm going to plant birch trees because birch trees are just easier to manage in general I think um, this this whole platform system throwing the platforms on, up above the trees uh, just made the, it take a really long time for the trees to actually grow so I think birch trees is just going to be an easier way to do it and I can take down all of these platforms and yeah I think I think that'll be much more efficient Okay, so I went off and I found myself just a few birch trees and I removed all those platforms at the top because they were just really restricting how quickly it took for those those oak trees to grow and I really don't want to deal with like those big oak trees so I think um I think birch trees are probably going to be the way to go. So I've got three at the moment, but once those grow up and we get some more saplings we'll be able to start growing this tree farm out, no worries. Okay, so after bone milling up a few trees, collecting a few saplings. We now have the 50 saplings that we needed to plant a full row or a whole bunch of birch trees essentially. So we've got 50 birch trees planted here. So this should be a very uh, even and consistent supply of wood. So now that we have the wood that we need, we can now make all the pistons that we need as well for um, for our sugarcane farm. And I'm, I'm can't even remember how to make pistons so let's have a look here we need iron redstone wood and cobblestone so it's a fairly simple recipe so yeah I'm just gonna get those materials together now and uh, yeah make myself a bunch of pistons okay folks so now I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and construct this sugarcane farm so I have all the materials here that I think I'll need in order to do so and I think we'll, we'll build it somewhere maybe we'll actually take it up to that corner or no no I'll have it over here nice and close so I can always get to it relatively quickly so I'm gonna build it just in, in this area here um, so I guess I'll just get started on that Okay, so I think I have the first module of my sugarcane farm built. Um, and I think I might go for... Oh, I don't know if I have enough materials. Um, I'd have to make more materials. But I might go for five of these modules. Um, so it'll be a pretty big sugarcane farm, but it'll be very effective in the long run. So it, it'll totally be worth it. So I'm going to get started on the next module then. Okay, so it looks like we have two of these modules built now. And uh, I'm, I'm really quite keen to see uh, if this is going to work. Um, we just need one more of these, these sugar canes over here to grow and it should should knock them all down and put them into these streams and then through this hopper line here. Uh, so we've got the two on the right hand side, we need to build uh, another module here in the middle and then we'll have two on the left hand side. So it'll be quite quite a big structure by the time it's done, but it will be uh, v hopefully quite efficient at getting us a very good amount of sugarcane. Okay, that sounded like uh, that side went off, although some, some sugarcane did fall out the side here. So we'll probably just have to add a stop here, just so it doesn't come falling out the edge on the other side. There we go, just put those in, but yeah, there we go, we got eight sugarcane in there, so that'll be all the eight on that bottom row, plus plus that ninth one. So we have a functioning sugarcane farm. So momentarily this side will go off too and it will push uh, a whole bunch more sugarcane down the side. And that's only two of the five modules that we're going to have done complete. So this is definitely all coming along very, very well. And there we have it. We have completed our epic sugarcane farm and uh, it was producing some stuff whilst we were in there it didn't just produce 41 it produced a little bit more than that but i'll just take everything out now and we'll just uh, see how long it takes for it to start filling up probably not going to take very long at all um so i'm probably gonna have to build a storage system for this thing some at some point uh, i'll probably go underground 
uh, to finish it and uh, to get, get a nice big storage system happening because I want to set up a few other little farms around this area as well. So we set up a nice big storage system uh, underground and then we can use that to collect everything that we need to collect. But yeah, I'm very happy with this at the moment. It, it seems to be working exactly as intended. Um, the the minecarts are a little bit annoying, but I am hoping that um, I will be able to rig up something with the, the, the redstone signal that comes out of the back of these observers. So when it sort of notices the sugarcane, it'll activate the pistons, but then also maybe activate the uh, these hopper minecarts um, just the one time, so they're not constantly running and making that noise. But I'm not 100% sure how to do that, so I'll have to do some research. But yeah, I think at the moment, that's, uh, that's all I've really got time for today. And, uh, you know, uh, I think this has been a particularly good episode. Uh, we got a lot done. Um, we got uh, a healthy supply of wood happening and a healthy supply of sugarcane happening. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll leave it there for this episode. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one. Ta-ta!